This week, we saw Dolphin get a major update. We'll take a look. And what's up with Heroic? Plus, the results for the Steam hardware survey in May were released, and we'll do a deep dive. All this and more today. That's right, it's time for Linux gaming news. The latest release of Dolphin is here, and it's accompanied by yet another enormous article. Uh, I'm a big fan of these. I think every open source project should follow in Dolphin's lead here because this goes over some of the most amazing uh, changes and the hard work and research that goes into this stuff. Uh, if you don't know what Dolphin is, it's a free and open source emulator for uh, the GameCube and the Wii. And uh, it's actually one of the best in class. Uh, it's a tremendous emulator that's capable of playing almost every single uh, game that was ever released for the GameCube and the Wii. Uh, there are a few exceptions, um, but for the most part, it's capable. And it's capable of being played on like the Raspberry Pi 5 and low power SBCs like that. And so I wanted to go over some of the uh, changes here. I mean, it's a legendary emulator and they do great stuff for the community. One of the first big changes here is the new granule synthesis audio system, which helps to fix some otherwise imperceptible lag. When a game lags just a little bit in Dolphin, the audio buffer can run out of data and that causes stuttering or popping like this. Now, this is because when the emulator runs out of audio data in the buffer, it has no choice but to stop playing audio for a moment. However, with this update, there is a marked improvement in the way lagging games sound. I mean, that sounds a heck of a lot better to me. I don't know about you. Then they also improved frame pacing here, and uh, frame pacing is a term that describes the consistency of rendering times between frames. Ideally, on a 60 hertz display, it should take 16.6 milliseconds to render each frame. But if half of your frames are rendering in 11.1 .1 milliseconds, which would be 90 FPS, while the other half takes 22.2 .2 milliseconds, which is 45 FPS, then you're actually going to have a very bad gaming experience, even though that averages out to 60 FPS. Here's the thing though, the Dolphin devs here were actually doing a fairly decent job at frame pacing, at least that's what they thought. But then they added Sam B's frame time and V-Blank analyzer to their code base and realized that there were some strange variances that they couldn't account for. If you look here, you can see the uh, consistent inconsistency, and especially with the frames here, it's, uh, it's quite out of whack. After a ton of work though, they realized that there were certain games that were issuing uneven V-Blank timings. And if you don't know what V-Blank is, in analog television signals, V-Blank is the, the blank space between frames. This didn't matter for analog television signals because the TV would just automatically adapt to it, but in the emulator, they weren't taking into account the pre and post blank timings until this latest update. Now though, frame time seemed to be dead letter perfect, and uh, that's very impressive work. There's a lot more to this story, so I recommend checking out their article that they wrote up about this because I found it absolutely fascinating. Next up is anisotropic filtering. Now, anisotropic filtering is one of those features that we don't often think about in the PC gaming world anymore, but it's still quite an expensive filtering technique for textures. In previous Dolphin releases, anisotropic filtering was a binary toggle. It was either always on or always off. The thing is though, the original hardware supported anisotropic filtering, but given how much less powerful the GameCube and the Wii were, uh, developers would only enable it for certain textures and only in certain scenarios. Yet Dolphin did not support this selective filtering at all until this release. Now the emulator will respect the texture filtering requests from games and it results in higher quality, not to mention more accurate textures. In this release, they also added a hack for one of my favorite gaming peripherals from the late 2000s, the Rock Band guitars. Specifically, these are the PlayStation branded guitar controllers, and Dolphin will now tell games looking for a guitar controller that the PS3 devices were actually the corresponding Wii controllers. And why not? I mean, they're practically identical. Now, there's a ton of other updates to Dolphin, and it looks incredible. You can check out their entire blog post with the link below. 
And if you didn't know, I have a blog set up too. Uh, it's called The Bryant Blog, and you can head over here and sign up for uh, to get notified when I post new things. In fact, I posted this story here as a uh, as a post on my blog. Very happy with this. Uh, I'm also posting stories from my childhood. I'm posting personal life updates and also Linux and emulation updates as well. So uh, if you're interested in all things nerdy and weird, you know, you can head over there and check that out because uh, it's pretty fun. And if you believe in the work that I'm doing, you can also become a member of the blog. It's all greatly appreciated. All right, there's a new update for Heroic Games Launcher, uh, and it's a smaller point release here, so there are only a handful of features and fixes, but uh, I think that this is still worth talking about. And I'll just go over some of the highlights here. Basically, they moved Proton to be the first Wine version in the list again, where before it wasn't. Um, when you highlight onto a setting with the controller, if it has a uh, an eye tooltip here, then it'll actually show you that tooltip when you're highlighted over it, which is nice for uh, the user experience with a gamepad. And they've also added support for several games too, which is really neat to see. Uh, you'll be able to find a link to this release of Heroic down in the description. But what do you think? I'd love to hear your thoughts on the, the stories that we've covered so far in this video. And while you're down there, why not like that smash button? It's the best way to tell YouTube you want to see more videos just like this. And did you know I release a new video every Friday and sometimes Monday too? Get subscribed so you don't miss those. I, I want to thank all of the folks on my blog on Patreon and my YouTube members for their continued support. It's because of their support that I'm able to continue doing this work. So uh, thank you very much for that. All right, let's get back to the news. All right, Linux representation on the Steam hardware survey reached an all time high in May. And this is a rather large increase too. I mean, we're talking about the total market share of Linux jumping by 18 and a half percent. Now it's not quite clear what caused this jump in Linux usage. Uh, but given that Linux Mint was one of the biggest winners here, it could possibly be the PewDiePie video that hit last month. I mean, Linux Mint was one of the distros that was highlighted there and he said it was great for beginners. So that could definitely be um, one of the reasons here. And if you haven't seen my video reacting to his, you can check it out up here. Now, if we take a look at the spreadsheet that I've been maintaining for uh, the last, I don't know, couple of years, we have the overall Linux percentage which is this number right here, overall Linux percentage, right? And then we also have the overall macOS percentage, which is just a sanity check uh, to make sure that my numbers don't seem outlandish. Uh, then we have the two overall Steam Deck GPUs, which are down here. We have the, um, the custom uh, 0504, which I believe is the Steam Deck LCD models uh, GPU. And then we have Van Gogh, which is the uh, OLED models GPU, right? So you can see they're they're within spitting distance of each other. Yeah. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking these two numbers, I'm adding them together. And then what I'm doing is I'm like looking at the number of overall uh, estimated absolute Steam users. And I think that that's a fairly uh, accurate number and I'm projecting out steam growth over time uh, that's why these columns are filled in because i'm this is just an estimate um and then we have and then what i'm doing here is i'm taking the the total gpu number and then uh, multiplying that by this number right and so that means that there's 4.798 million steam deck users on uh on on the steam survey and if we look at the absolute uh, users of SteamOS, uh, it's a slightly higher number. In reality, this are, these are gonna fluctuate between the two. You're gonna have a, a small handful of people who install Windows on the Steam Deck, and you're gonna have a small handful of people who use uh, like the SteamOS image on other handhelds. And you can see historically that these numbers very closely uh, track except for in january there it seemed like there were fewer steam os users so i don't know how can entirely accurate my numbers are but this is these are my projections uh there's approximately 15 million uh linux users on steam if you take uh if you take this number 
and multiply it by that number, you get 10 mil uh, 15 million. The number of macOS users on Steam is about 10 million. We're, we're beating them handily. Uh, so yeah, I would love to know what you think about my numbers because they could be wrong, uh, but I have fun kind of maintaining this list every month. Uh, it's a fun tradition for me. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on my numbers and uh, I'll definitely update this if you guys have any input uh, on ways I can improve these numbers. But with that said, it's been a bit of a slower news week for uh, Linux and SteamOS news. But uh, I'm grateful for you being here, and I hope that you tune in again. Get subscribed if you haven't, and I'll see you guys in the next one.